The Axis forces that had unified Rome and Berlin had been shattered. Mussolini had been deposed, and the Italians had lost the will to fight the invading Allies. In southern Italy, U.S. and British forces were advancing north to push the Germans out of the Mediterranean country once and for all. Still, Hitler declined to concede Italy and give the Allies another path into Germany. He would defend the peninsula even if the Italians refused to do so. Consequently, Germany established an unbending defensive wall known as the Gustav Line. Like waves against a rock, the Allies couldn't advance through the German fortification. Hence, a significant diversion was planned. A force spearheaded by elite U.S. Army Rangers would land north of the wall and pierce through enemy territory, then capture the town of Cisterna and force the Germans to fight simultaneously on two fronts. The Rangers landed almost unopposed and expected to find an equally feeble resistance at Cisterna. They had been trained as a light and elite special force by British commandos, and U.S. leaders expected them to seize the small Italian town without major complications. Still, just as the army rangers began the attack, a Polish soldier that had deserted the German army crossed the U.S. front line and warned the commanders of a massive defensive operation at Cisterna. But the officers disregarded the report, and the U.S. servicemen walked right into one of the most brutal traps ever seen during World War II. The rangers are activated. The U.S. Army Rangers go back to the 17th century, during the time of the English colonies. They served during the American Revolution, the War of 1812, the Black Hawk War, and the Civil War, after which the units were disbanded and their title disappeared. It would be 80 years later, during the height of World War II, that Major General Lucien Truscott of the U.S. Army took note of the highly successful British commandos while serving under the British General Staff. The recently commissioned British commandos had proven to be formidable assets at intelligence gathering, counterintelligence, interrogations, sabotage, and working behind enemy lines. Truscott believed the U.S. could benefit from having its own commando-style units, and he suggested to General George Marshall that an American team be set up along the lines of the British commandos. The suggestion was accepted, and the U.S. Army Rangers were assembled again after their 80-year hiatus. A total of six Ranger battalions were organized, five to operate in the European theater and one to fight on the Pacific Front. Like their predecessors, the new Rangers were to be schooled as a light infantry unit, capable of moving stealthily and covering significant distances swiftly. However, they would now be trained in Carrickfergus, North Ireland, using the tactics of British World War II commandos, and they would specialize in sabotage, counterintelligence, and special operations. Most of the newly trained rangers came from the 34th Infantry Division. As such, they already had combat experience and military training before joining the Special Operations Unit. With such a formidable training and profile, U.S. commanders had high expectations. The 1st, 3rd, and 4th Ranger Battalions deployed to North Africa during Operation Torch and were eventually moved to Italy as the Allies attempted to liberate the Mediterranean nation. A struggle over Italy. After the Allies successfully took control of North Africa in the spring of 1943, they proceeded to invade Sicily, which they seized in less than a month. With the loss of Sicily, the Axis forces had lost all of their influence in the Mediterranean Sea. Italy was now surrounded and starved of supplies, leading to political turmoil inside the country. Mussolini's regime then collapsed and the Italian military signed an armistice with the Allies on September 3, 1943. Hitler was furious, and immediately deployed several German divisions to Italy to take control of the territory and disarm the Italian forces. Meanwhile, the Allies advanced at a steady pace through southern Italy, but Hitler became convinced that he needed to stop them before they approached Germany. If the enemy captured northern Italy, they would be able to set up airfields very close to German territory. Consequently, at the cost of weakening the forces on the Eastern Front, Germany heavily reinforced Italy and set up a series of formidable defenses known as the Winter Line. The most fortified one was the Gustav Line, which used the mountainous terrain in mid-Italy to create an almost impenetrable wall. Despite the early success, the Gustav Line became an overwhelming obstacle for the Allies, who were unable to cross it for over five months and ultimately stopped while trying to capture Rome. Frustrated, 
British Prime Minister Winston Churchill pushed for an alternative strategy that called for a significant landing in northern Italy, forcing the Germans to split their forces into two and allowing the southern troops to finally break the fortified German line. The scheme would come to be known as Operation Shingle. Operation Shingle The operation entailed a massive American, British, and Canadian landing at the port city of Anzio, from where the Allies would advance to the town of Cisterna and eventually to Rome, forcing the Germans to diminish their defense of the Gustav Line. The invading troops would have to be light and move fast to guarantee the element of surprise. With this in mind, the U.S. Army Rangers were chosen to spearhead the dash towards Cisterna, as their specialized training was ideal for the mission at hand. The amphibious invasion began on January 22, 1944, with an exceptionally successful landing in which the Allies were met with little German resistance. However, the remarkable Allied performance would then turn for the worst, as John P. Lucas, the 6th Corps commander and the leader of Operation Shingle, decided to take a cautious approach and reinforce the beachhead instead of marching inland immediately. As Lucas took his time and delayed marching into Cisterna, the Germans had the opportunity to regroup and learn about the Allied strategy. The Trap at Cisterna Lucas had 69,000 men at the Anzio beachhead. Still, as he slowly prepared to advance inland, the Germans were able to muster a force of 71,500 troops to oppose them. By waiting, the Allies had lost the element of surprise. Lucas's plan was to conduct a double-edged strike. He would send the British 1st Infantry Division in the primary attack to Campoleone in the Alban Hills. At the same time, a U.S. Ranger force would conduct an attack on Cisterna and clear the Conca Isola Bella Cisterna Road during the night in preparation for a major assault from the 15th Infantry Regiment and the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment the following day. Lucas then hoped to quickly seize the town. Nevertheless, the plan was flawed from the start, as it relied on faulty intelligence that concluded that the primary line of German resistance was behind Cisterna. In reality, the German military had designated Cisterna as a significant staging ground for its reserve divisions and had recently moved additional forces into the area. The Germans had anticipated that the Allies might try to launch an amphibious attack on northern Italy, and although they didn't know the exact locations of the landings, they were prepared to move fast once it happened. When the German High Command learned of the Allied attack at Anzio, they swiftly deployed the 3rd Panzer Grenadier Division, supported by armored trucks and half-trucks armed with MG-34 and MG-42 machine guns. Soon, the Hermann Göring Division arrived at Cisterna with tanks, and the 2nd Parachute Lehr Battalion from the 4th Fallschirmjäger Division also joined the preparations for a counterattack. The Rangers were not in their best condition. Besides being armed for stealth and mobility with powerful weapons such as the American bazooka, they had been used as frontline soldiers for months, and their training as special operation troops had been disregarded. Moreover, they had suffered significant losses, and the reinforcements lacked specialized training. Still, Lucas moved on with his plan, and just as the two primary forces were deployed, a Polish soldier that had just deserted the German army warned the U.S. officers of a significant buildup of German forces at Cisterna. But suspicion and a lack of effective communication led to proceeding as planned. The Allies were unknowingly walking into a devastating trap. The Battle Commanded by Brigadier Colonel Orlando Darby, the Ranger 1st and 3rd Battalions began their attack on the night of January 30th. The terrain around Cisterna was vast and flat, and the Rangers had to use irrigation ditches to move toward the town without being detected. The Rangers moved swiftly and silently, without encountering enemy activity, until they were within 600 yards from the outskirts of Cisterna. Unbeknownst to the Allies, they had been detected by the Germans, who had let them pass in order to draw them into their trap. Once the Rangers were relatively close to the town, the Germans unleashed a bullet storm. The Americans began to suffer significant casualties, but confident in their intelligence, the 1st Battalion pressed on, walking further into the lethal trap. Utter chaos ensued, communication between the battalions was disrupted, and the 1st and 3rd Battalions didn't know how the others were doing. The men tried to radio Colonel Darby as the situation grew more dire. Still, they were unable to reach him and decided to continue with the attack. Soon, they were engaged by German tanks, and they had to shelter in the nearby irrigation ditches. 
The Americans managed to destroy several tanks using their bazookas, but the German resistance only became more aggressive with every passing minute, and Panzer units were now moving to encircle the Rangers. With the sudden arrival of the German 2nd Parachute Lehr Battalion, the Rangers of the 1st and 3rd Battalions were surrounded and unable to escape. The 83rd Chemical Mortar Battalion was then called to keep the Germans at bay, but this could only buy the Rangers some time. Rescue Attempt Reinforcements came to support the Rangers, but they were only able to deliver support to the 4th Ranger Battalion, which was positioned the farthest away from Cisterna and not wholly surrounded yet. With the help of B Company, the 4th Ranger Battalion was able to withdraw, leaving the other Rangers trapped in the outskirts of Cisterna. As more Rangers were captured and neutralized, the Germans started to parade the prisoners in front of the men still fighting in order to persuade them to surrender. But in a defiant move, the Rangers sniped the prisoners' guards, leading the Germans to bayonet their comrades right in front of them. Overcome by panic, many of the newer Rangers abandoned their posts and surrendered to the Germans. When Darby finally learned of the gravity of the situation, he led what was left of the 4th Ranger Battalion in several attempts to break the encirclement and deliver a way out to those that were trapped. Still, his forces were too small to break the German circle, and the Ranger armament was too light to confront the Wehrmacht's tanks and armored trucks. Darby fearlessly tried to dislodge his troops surrounded at Cisterna, and the 4th Ranger Battalion and the 83rd Chemical Mortar Battalion did everything in their power to save their comrades, even losing half their own forces. Realizing they would be destroyed, the trapped rangers immediately disassembled their weapons, buried them along with tactical documents, and informed Darby of the situation before destroying their radios. Aftermath By the end of the day on January 31st, the Germans neutralized the last pockets of defiant rangers. In one brutal blow, the Wehrmacht had eliminated half of the American Ranger forces of World War II. The overwhelming defeat of the U.S. Rangers at Cisterna was a humiliating blow to the Allies fighting in Italy. German morale was boosted, and they would eventually launch a massive counteroffensive on the Anzio beachhead, which would devolve into a months-long stalemate in the region. The Rangers were then replaced and sent home on February 16, 1944, while the survivors in Italy were disbanded and absorbed by other forces marking a bitter end to what was meant to be an elite U.S. force trained by British commandos. Meanwhile, the town of Cisterna and the Gustav Line would not fall until five months later. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed the story, click on your screen and check out another of our Dark Documentaries channels, where we delve into the most fascinating military events and the incredible technology that made them possible. Stay tuned.